What I want to do now is that I want to go in now that we're done with collisions, because ultimately, what do we got to talk about? We got to talk about B center of mass being a constant. And one of the things that I said here is that it's customary to not talk about B center of mass, even though that's the most important thing here. We change the language into momentum. So here we go. So now let's go introduce the topic of linear momentum. And so what you're gonna see here is that I'm gonna talk about two things. I have to talk about linear momentum and then I have to talk about impulse. So I'll start with momentum and let's, let's go for that. So you all have heard this expression and you already know what I'm about to say. So what I wanna do here is that it's very, I mean, this is common knowledge, of course, just from your experience here, is that a larger truck is harder to stop than a smaller car moving at the same speed. Yeah, that's obvious, right? But if I look at what I'm talking about, what am I really saying here? Well, I could have a larger car, right? Or a larger truck, right? You can imagine I have my red car right here and then I have my car. So if I'm thinking about my car, we agree that the car here has to be moving at the, it's moving at the same speed. And so when I'm looking at these, these guys have the exact same speed right here, right? And what we wanna do here is that we wanna stop them. Now, no, we could use the word work, but that's typically not what we really say. There's some people that when you hear them talk about this thing, what do they say? You may have heard this statement and the statement goes like this. They'll say, the truck is harder to stop because it has more momentum. I mean, I've even heard my young son say that and I'll go, what the hell did you just say? What do you mean more momentum? And most people have no idea what momentum is. But what we, what we can say here is that momentum, you know, is about mass in motion but so is kinetic energy. Momentum, if I was to try to give a sense of what it's talking about, I would say that it's the strength to continue in the forward motion. Right, that might be a better statement. But again, we have not defined momentum yet. So I don't want to get ahead of myself. But that's what I tried to explain my to my young son at the time, that it's about the strength of this thing wanting to continue to move forward. So clearly, momentum has to depend on mass, and it has to depend on speed. So we could then go in and we can define momentum then and we typically use this, uh, we typically say that it's mass times velocity. So this is known as classical momentum. So momentum is like this. And when I write it down, we typically use the symbol P, which is fairly universal. This 
is my statement about my definition of momentum. A very simple definition. And believe it or not, I'm at it again. Meaning less. That shit has no meaning whatsoever. What is meaningful? Only changes in momentum. So if somebody says something has a big momentum, I'm going to say, Psh, that, that person's talking bullshit. They don't know what the hell they're saying. It's meaningless. What's meaningful? Change in momentum. This is meaningful. This is what we want right there. Now, if I just, just naively not spend too much time on units, I would say that a unit of momentum is then a unit of mass, a unit of velocity, which looks like a kilogram meter per second. And it almost looks like a Newton. We're missing one of the seconds in the denominator. So the most common unit that I like to use is a Newton second. So a unit of momentum is a Newton second. So before we get started, let's go look at some properties. Okay. And again, I'm going to repeat myself because it's important that we get all these details straight. So properties of linear momentum. Again, 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 I'm gonna keep repeating myself until I brainwash you. Similar to energy, right? Momentum by itself is meaning meaningless, right? Only changes in momentum are meaningful, right? crazy only changes why was energy you know meaningful only in changes because we had to do work work is about a change in position you're going to see that with momentum we're going to redefine what that means not in terms of position but in terms of time so we need changes in time to define momentum Okay, two, there are two ways to change momentum, right? And the way we look at that is we look at mass. We just talked about mass, right? So if I look at the mass dependence, When I think about a mass dependence, well, I'm going to think about two objects. So I could imagine that I have a small car and then I have a big truck. And just as before, which we already talked about here, right? I had a green car and I had a red truck. And so when I'm looking at these guys, I'm going to assume that their speed are exactly the same. So clearly this has a small mass. This guy has a large mass. So what do I got to do to the truck, right? The only meaningful thing that I know how to do is I got to do what? I got to stop that truck. So here I go. I got to stop.
stop that car so that its speed is zero. I gotta stop that truck so that its speed is zero. That's the only thing that I can do. Once I do that, now I could start talking about the word momentum. And what does the word momentum say here? This is what it says here, is that if I look at my change in momentum, my final momentum here, right? My final momentum has to be V2 minus V1, and that's my change in momentum. So when I look at this thing, both of the, oh man, I forgot to add the masses, sorry. Both of these have the same final momentum. So when I ask the question, what was different about these guys? It was the mass. I look at the speeds and the speeds are exactly the same, but the masses are different. So this tells me here that the change of momentum here is small. The change in momentum here is large. So I have a bigger momentum change in the truck because it has a bigger mass. And the same thing happens with speeds. So then I can have a speed dependence. So now what we say here is that the change in momentum of the truck is much bigger. <coughs> I could do the same thing with cars, right? Because I could imagine that I have two cars. They're the exact same color, but they have different paint jobs. So I got this guy right here, and then I got the purple car. And so when I look at these guys here, one is traveling slow, the other one is a speedster, clearly moving faster. But if we're gonna talk about momentum, what do we gotta do? We gotta talk about stopping them. We gotta stop them. So now, once I've stopped these guys, I can now talk about the word momentum here. And so when I go and I look at the momentum, then we start to ask the question, what caused these guys to have momentum? Well, at the end, we know that they gotta have zero. And we know that they each have the same mass because they're the same make and car, just different paint. So what's different? One had a small speed, the other one had a big speed. As a consequence, this guy had a bigger change in momentum, this guy, at a smaller change in momentum. That's what's meaningful, changing that. The other thing that we should talk about here is that it's a vector, right? Momentum is about a, being a vector. So momentum is a vector. So when I look at a vector, what do we know? Well, if I have a vector and it's mass times velocity, what that really means is that I really have momentum in the x direction, i, plus momentum in the y direction, j. Which of course means that this guy has to be mvx and this guy has to be mvy. Assuming that the masses are the same, but they don't have to be. Where, of course, if we want the magnitude of the momentum, we have to go in and we have to look at its components. If we want the direction of the momentum, we have to take the inverse of the tangent inverse of the y over the x. So it's a vector. And, that's, and that actually complicates things when we get to the conservation law. And then the fourth thing that I'll talk about is Newton's second law, right? N2L. If you look at the way Newton wrote down Newton's second law, it is not written as F equals to MA. The true definition of Newton's second law is that the net force is the derivative 
of the momentum. This is Newton's second law. Not F equals to MA. What we find here is that we have a special case if M is equal to a constant. Because if M is equal to a constant, then this tells me here that the net force then is really the derivative of MV dt. So if I now use the chain rule, I get dm dt, the velocity, plus m dv dt. And if I have a constant mass, then that term is zero. And then of course, the derivative of the velocity then gives me mass times acceleration. So it's a special case of Newton's second law.